Welcome back. My guest tonight used to ruin everything on a show. Adam ruins everything. And now he's trying to help you learn something about the government. His new show, The G Word, is streaming on Netflix right now. He's in town doing some shows at the Arlington Draft House. He's Adam Conover, up late with me tonight on the final. Good to see you. Hey, thanks so much for having me. Man. Happy to have you here. Uh, so, first of all, let's talk about the show because I, I remember yeah. you. I think people remember you from Adam Ruins Everything. I hope so. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the new show's been streaming for uh, about two months right now. Right. It's out there. Six episodes. Tell us what it's about. So, this is a show about all the incredible things the government does, both good and bad, mm -hmm. that affect our lives. Uh, we do it through sketch comedy, you know, just some really cool, visual, hilarious explanations of how the government works. And then I go visit some of the workers on the ground who actually work for the government. I fly through a hurricane with Noah's Hurricane Hunters. I uh, go visit a Cargill meat processing facility to see how the <laughs> USDA inspects meat. Yeah. And we also meet a lot of people who are affected by the government in ways both good and bad. What I love is a, a, every episode is just a, a, a simple word, meat, weather, a, a military, yeah. you get to that. Uh, what I, I think is curious and what's interesting about this too is you're doing this with the help of somebody who might know a little bit about the government. Yeah, uh, the show is executive produ produced by Barack Obama. Um, Familiar it, with his work. Yeah, it, his uh, <laughs> production company is involved in the show. Mm -hmm. He was not creatively involved in the show. He uh, optioned the, the Michael Lewis book that the show was based on and uh, sort of got the project going. But when we got started, I said, hey, I need editorial independence on yeah. the show. I can't just be repeating sort of Obama political folks' opinions on things. Right. And they stuck to that and gave me that room, which was uh, really cool. Let's take a quick look at a clip from the show, and we'll uh, talk about it in the back end. So the entire GPS constellation is run from this room? Absolutely. By these 10 people? Yeah, these 10 people provide this service to everybody across the globe. Wow. It's usually a big surprise for people to figure that out. Yeah. So you folks here, you're sending messages to the satellite to check right. on it, to adjust what it's doing, et cetera, and you're coordinating that from here. Exactly. And this gives us command authority on the satellite. You actually have command of the satellite right now? Yeah, as this is setting up. Wow. City. That was Colorado out there. That was uh, a yeah. Space Force? Yeah, that is a Space Force facility mm -hmm. where the entire GPS constellation is run <laughs> by the U.S. military. Not place. a lot of people realize this. You assume Apple or Google invented GPS yeah. or TomTom Tom or Garmin, one of these mm -hmm. companies. It was the United States government, and the United States government still runs it to this day. Those 11 people in that room make the... When you pull out your phone, yeah. you are talking to government military staff. It's amazing, too, because that was something that was declassified and really made more accessible in the last you yeah. know 30 or 40 years. There. Yeah. Yeah. What uh, what surprised you about doing this? When you were approached to do this, what was the big surprise that you picked up in the process? I mean, the crazy thing is, I I'm sometimes a very cynical person. Mm -hmm. You know, on Adam Ruins Everything, we told you about how everything's a lie, yeah. about how uh, the world is a lot more awful than you might believe. Right. What amazed me is how many people who work for the federal government actually care about the mission that they are doing. The folks at the FDIC could be making a lot more money working for the banks, sure. right? But instead, they decide, no, I want to be a bank regulator. Mm -hmm. I want to make sure that I help the average citizen keep their money safe in the bank. And they actually wake up every day excited to help people in that way. Now, that's not to Say, the government doesn't do a lot of bad things as well. It does, <laughs> but like there are really awesome folks who are really trying to help people, and that made me very uncynical. So as we, as you look at what you've done in the past, where you, you chase down, I don't want to call them myths, but really urban legends and whatnot on Adam Ruins Everything, different, completely different show here. Are there similarities or, or was this, did you have to approach this differently? I mean, I'm always looking for myths to bust. That's mm -hmm. part of what I do. That's part of how I make a story exciting. Uh, so part of it for me was finding what are the biggest myths about the federal government. Yeah. And one of them is that we've been told for decades that the federal government can't do anything right, that it's always inefficient, it's always wasteful, and we have to dismantle it and give all its duties to private businesses. Yeah. And there are certain things that private businesses do better than the government, but that sort of rhetoric that propaganda campaign has made us ignore how many incredible services the government provides and how many things it does that literally no other body could do. No company could have spent 50 to 70 years inventing, researching GPS and managing those satellites. Only the government could do that. And we rely on the government every day. So maybe we should do a little bit better job of, you know, safeguarding what those duties are. Well, and I think, too, it's something that we are all... At, it sounds cliche to say we're all in this together, but this yeah. is something, obviously, where, like it or not, the government is a, is a monolith that will be there, and regardless, as we, uh, as we look at what happens moving beyond that, 
Uh, what else? Are, what else are you doing? Like, what else are you working on moving down the road here? Well, right now, uh, I've been working on TV for years, yeah. and during the pandemic, I was you know stuck inside. I wasn't able to tour, so I'm finally on the road doing stand-up comedy, which is my first love as a comedian. Yeah. I'm at the Arlington Draft House this weekend. Um, I'm doing a whole new hour about my childhood diagnosis with attention deficit disorder, <laughs> about the attention economy, mm -hmm. about uh, drugs like Adderall, stuff like that. It's a very funny show. I hope folks come out. <laughs> I like when you talk about that. I mean. Because those are serious issues, but you find a way to put a spin on it. There. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, my personal history for it is pretty weird, so yeah. uh, there's a lot to laugh about there. Uh, shows, uh, well, obviously this is airing Friday night, but you will do this throughout the weekend, too. And I got two shows on Saturday. All yeah. right. Adam Conover, the show is called The G Word. Check it out on Netflix. Good to see you. Thanks for coming in tonight. Thank you so much for Always. having me, man. Thanks. Really wonderful being here. And The Final Five is back right after this.